Welcome back to another episode. We are back again with some more content concerning streamers. My name is Sig, and of course you're listening to Two Guys One Gamepad. Let's dive into it as we have a lot to cover and not a lot of time to get this done. So, first off, as many of you may or may not know, uh, whether this is your first episode or this is your fifth, twentieth, or even hundredth plus episode. Both Roggle and myself are streamers. I took up the full-time streamer uh, position and Roggle is a sporadic part-time streamer. Uh, nothing wrong with either one of these. It's not like we came to agreement and said, Roggle, you can only be part-time. Sig, you can only be full-time or vice versa. This is based upon um, time availability in our lives and what we have uh, able, what, how much time we have to pursue this uh, hobby or passion. So today's episode is going to focus very heavily, and by heavily, I mean it's a whole bloody episode of being a streamer. So sit back, get some paper, pen, maybe a drink and some snacks so you can enjoy this as well as take notes. And again, this is all opinionated, and this is all based upon my own personal research, uh, advice, that I've been given from other full-time streamers and even part-time streamers, those who have truly made it with hundreds of thousands and even millions of followers and subscribers to those who, you know, maybe a little one or two these and those who just started out and so much more. So what we're covering today is going to be starting your journey to becoming a streamer. So let's get into it, shall we? First off, when you're becoming a streamer, you're, you're considering becoming a streamer there is something you need to consider um there's actually there's actually three major major feature uh, things you need to decide in your in your journey first off is honest you need to be honest with yourself is how much time do you want to truly commit not only how much do you want to but how much can you commit to this because just for example i'm going to use roggle myself um roggle works full time, like at an actual job. His kids are a little bit older than mine, so they have extracurricular activities, um, like sports and school events that take up a lot of time. So he himself stays fairly busy with dad life. Me on the other hand, I stay at home. I'm a stay at home parent. I also work from home and run my own little business as well. So I have time to do what I need to do and how I need to do it. On top of that, I am, for example, we'll get more into my schedule actually. Uh, so you need to decide whether or not you can commit full time. And that's that's things like a full time job, 32 plus hours a week. Uh, Roggle streams guaranteed, virtually guaranteed every Thursday night for our two guys one game pad game night. When he goes live on Twitch, I also stream during that time. But right now, I also stream Monday through Friday in the morning for at least a couple hours, if not longer, depending upon, you know, like when I wake up type deal. Uh, but you need to be in that mindset and that perspective of full time streamer, meaning you are legitimately streaming and making this a job. And that's what it is. It, it, it becomes a job because there's a lot to it. There's more to it than just simply pr pressing play or record or stream and going live. There's more to it. So with that said, that's something you really need to consider. If and you, can, of course, don't think, oh, if I, I had to commit to one or the other. No, start off as a part timer. See if you want it, if it's something you want to uh, invest your time and effort and money into. Or, you know, if you feel like you can handle full time, absolutely do it. It does not matter. You can switch in between. This is not a guaranteed either which way. And I can tell you as someone who has gone from full-time to part-time to sporadic to part-time back to full-time, it can change as your life goes. So don't feel like you have to commit because while I say it's like a job, you can quit anytime. And, you know, as long as you have a backup, you're fine. So the second thing you need to decide on is your platform of choice. And well, second and third kind of go hand in hand. Your platform choice you have the big four right now which is twitch facebook youtube and kick 
um, are your four big ones. And then you have smaller, maybe not as recognized in gym type platforms as well. And those are like D live. You used to be able to stream on, on Twitter. You can't anymore. Um, but you have like D live, you have Amazon, you have steam. Um, you can do your own personal website. If you want to go down that Avenue, you can create a, what's called a TV channel or TV website that allows you to stream on there along with others. Uh, there's multiple other platforms as well. The big focus is on this episode are going to be the big four Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, and kick. Uh, so that's like, that's going to be what we reference a lot of. So your third thing kind of caveat to second thing technically is when you're choosing a platform, you need to also kind of be deciding, do you want to take the, uh, the multi streaming platform, the multi-platform route, or do you want to take a singular platform? So again, Roggle and I have really good uh, case studies for this because Roggle is a singular channel, meaning he is only live on Twitch. So if you were to go to twitch.tv forward slash Roggle, you would find his one and only primary account where he streams. Whereas for myself, if you go to Twitch, if you go to Facebook, if you go to YouTube, you go to Kick, there's also other places as well, and you search Cybermerc Sig, you will find my channels. I am live on all four channels, if not more channels at a time, and I live stream on all four platforms every day and every time I go live. So multi versus singular, kind of something to think about. And again, you can definitely start on one and go to the other. Some things you kind of need to understand as well is Twitch is super saturated right now. It's oversaturated with streamers, uh, both very small, sporadic, partial streamers, part-time streamers, full-time streamers, partnerships. Uh, like there's a lot, there's a lot more people on Twitch than there are on the other three big platforms. Uh, so kind of take that in mind and why this is important is because when you are streaming or you're getting ready to set up streaming, you want to be able to set yourself apart. You want to be able to be easily discoverable. And there's a lot of factors that come into play with that one. So Twitch is very oversaturated, um, followed by honestly, YouTube, Facebook, and then kick kick is very in its infancy stage. Still technically it's fairly young. It started post pandemic. Uh, and the reason why like Twitch is so oversaturated is because of the pandemic that took place in 2020, everybody was staying at home. And this was kind of the, the surge of a lot of weird shit being streamed from hot tub streams to soft core adult content to full on adult content and so much more. Um, it, it sparked a weird era that we're still in and it's eh, it's so weird um kick on the other hand still has all that as well but it's still in the infancy stage you're still figuring things out like just recently and by just recently i mean within the last five days of this podcast being created this episode being created um they just created their kick creator incentive program um whereas before it was basically your partner and affiliate or you weren't like twitch has you're either affiliate slash partner or you're not um, and what that allows your community to do is be able to subscribe to your channel. So they're paying you, um, which is kind of the ultimate goal for most streamers is get to the point where they can have subscribers and they can get people to subscribe to their channel. But in order to subscribe to your channel, you have to have content on your channel. So speaking of the content, let's dive into that. Shall we? Cause content can be tons of different avenues. Um, the traditional stereotypical, honestly, stereotypical content creator for a streamer is video games. Um, whether it's retro old school games like the Atari or it's emulators on computer or it's, you know, playing PlayStation and playing Xbox, playing Nintendo Switch, Game Boy, whatever you can, whatever you want type thing. Um, and before we go kind of any, any further on this speaking of gamer or gaming game streams there we go um 
this is where a lot of uh, opinions differ very strongly. Uh, there's a very, very hard mindset that's still going on that in order to make it as a streamer, you must choose a, choose one singular game and pursue that game every time you stream. There's the alternative, which is myself, that is called a variety streamer, meaning you don't have a set game that you play every stream, you play a slew of games. So for example, again, Roggle and I are very, very good case studies for this. If you want opinions or perspectives on it, Roggle streams Call of Duty. Like that is his game. That is what you will find 99.999% of the time. He is a Call of Duty streamer. Whereas myself, I'll stream Call of Duty, but I will also stream other games as well. We will stream, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3. We'll stream Apex, Fortnite, uh, Metal Gear Solid, World of Warcraft, Overwatch, WWE 2K24, other 2K games. Um, I'll do Sims. I'll do full on simulators like Farming Simulator, uh, Power Wash Simulators, House Flipper, Disney Dreamlight Village, Back for Blood, Left for Dead. Um, the list just kind of goes on and on and I, I'm a variety streamer. I play what I want, when I want, and how I want. Whereas Roggle is deemed a singular game streamer because he plays just one game. And there's a lot of perspective and opinions on this where uh, even the big time creators will say you need to choose one game, become really good at it, and um, time will come where people start watching you because you have that community already established. Whereas the other side of the coin or that the same people will, for the most part, let's just say and bash, they will go after and, and negatively speak about variety streamers because the thought process is, is if you are playing whatever game you want, however you want and choosing different games every time is you're bouncing through communities. You're going through the Call of Duty community to the Destiny 2 community to the World of Warcraft community to, you know, Disney community to simulator communities and you're just bouncing around and you're not, you're not captivating this, uh, the audience enough for them to say, oh yeah, he, he plays Apex on Mondays, but on Thursday nights he plays Call of Duty, but then, you know, on Friday, maybe he plays World of Warcraft. Like, it's a lot of catch-22 situation, basically, is what I'm getting at. So, you need to decide, and again, this is not set in stone, this is not definitive, this is not the end-all, be-all. You can definitely switch back and forth. You can have what's called a main game, and a side game, which a lot of even the big creators, contrary to what most of them will tell you, because a lot of them will say, oh, no, I only play Call of Duty. And that's just not true when you check out their channel. Uh, I personally think it's it's very smart to have absolutely have a main game, a game you play guaranteed no matter what. But having, you know, a second or even a third game that you can be like, well, I'm burnt out on Call of Duty. Let me go play Fortnite. I'm burnt out on Call of Duty. Let me go play Back for Blood. I'm burnt out on this or, you know, I don't like where they're taking this right now. So I'm going to go play a different game. And that in of itself is very smart. And why it's not deemed a variety streaming, I don't know. Um, I, I couldn't tell you because when interviewing, asking other people, Nobody could give me like a definitive answer. The way they kind of stated it was streaming is more about having a main game and then maybe a secondary or third game that you can kind of fall back on if you get burnt out, if you're bored, if you just don't like the way the, the direction of the developers are going, which there's games out there like Destiny 2 where you will have hardcore streamers play Destiny 2 for months on end and then a new DLC comes out or a new season comes out and they're very quick to be like, well, this is fucking real. I don't like this anymore and they stop playing. So then they go back to another game. Um, whereas a variety streamer is more along the lines of like, literally this morning, played Apex. Tomorrow, I'm going to play Overwatch. The next day, I'm playing Kingdom Hearts 3, continuing the story. The day after that, um, I am playing Disney Dreamlight 
village the day after or that night i'm playing call of duty and that next morning i don't know what i'm playing yet i have a catalog um but how i choose my games are unique to to me to a degree i know there's other creators out there other streamers out there that do this um but i don't see it too often i'm because i am a multi-streamer i stream on all big all the four platforms at one time i get a good sense of each community and i literally every stream and every post which we'll get to later on every clip i make says the same thing of if you have a game you'd like me to play let me know comment and again we'll touch base on this a little bit more so but a little bit more on that later back to streaming content because again the, the stereotypical when you think of a streamer is video games unless you, you you've been around for a bit then maybe hot tub but streaming content can be video games it could be you know you have a podcast like this one and you just go live every time you record or you go live on a weekly basis or bi-weekly basis whatever um hobbies like woodworking or even like there's there's guys out there who have a fish tank channel and you just kind of watch their fish tank all day and they run it you know eight to twelve hours um there's honestly something soothing and relaxing about that um it could be you know cleaning how to clean videos it could be uh, how to DIYs that type of stuff it could be on the more adult side of the house too like hot tub streams um there are definitely a certain demographic that will excel significantly better than the other demographic in this specific sector of streaming content and it's it's not me stereotyping is statistically it's factual like you can go out there and you can see it yourself um, so it's not like it's fabricated but it could be hot tubs where you're literally just chatting with people in a hot tub or you're maybe playing video games in a hot tub you're horsing around i, I seen one where it was mud wrestling hot tub wrestling um just shy of you know of only fans it could be basically be a free version of that the things you can get away with on streams is very dependent upon the platform on which you are streaming on. Um, and you can stream, my understanding, don't quote me on this, my understanding is you can stream on OnlyFans. I don't know if that's true. It is something, again, that I've I've been told by people I've interviewed. Uh, OnlyFans does that. I don't know. Don't quote me on it. But something that kind of, you know, if that's your oh, thoughts, you'll fancy, do it. You do you, boo-boo. Have fun doing it. That's all that matters. Uh, but basically, whatever you want to do can be streamed to any degree that you want at all. It does not matter the the intensity of it or the minimalistic of it. it it's all streamable. And while it is technically as easy as pressing go live, there's more to it. I promise you there's more to it uh, so find what you want to do decide if you want to be a multi streamer if you want to be a variety streamer um, what type of content you want to produce and once you have that down then we can go into the the actual streaming side of the house from pre-production to live streaming to your social media moments or capturing moments and highlights post-production and more so once you have that all figured out you can go on to the next step which is in my opinion social media and pre-production so first off you finally figured out that you want to be a streamer you finally figured out uh that you want to be a variety or singular main game multi-streamer whatever it is you figured out your journey path that you want to go on now you need to come up with a name and you need to come up with your social media accounts. So we're kind of going to jump ahead a little bit. Um, if you're watching the video edition, you can see the this journey map that I'm talking about. Uh, but when you come up with a name for your for your channel, what I would strongly suggest 
because you're building a brand that is basically what's happening here you are entertainment to the masses and you're building a brand you want to be reckon you need to be easily recognized you need to be easily followed and easily found and the best way to do it is social media uh, because everyone's posting everyone's talking on social media so you need to come up with a name and when you have a name for your channel um for example cyber Merc sig you need to go on social media and you need to capitalize on social media by finding or signing up for each platform with and taking that that same handle so for example if you were go on twitter if you were going on to tiktok instagram facebook youtube um uh threads what's some other ones i do basically i'm, I'm on it's like 25 or 30 platforms i have taken the name cyber Merc sig on all of them so if you if you're watching my live stream and you know you're going well i really want to see what other content he's posting let me go to tiktok and you can search tiktok cyber Merc sig you'll find me you can go to instagram it's me and it's all the exact same spelling there's no additional uh, letters or numbers or special characters it is my exact same name spelt the exact same way on all platforms and it makes it very easy for basically brand recognition brand recognition there we go where if you are watching my live stream you can find me anywhere else and it makes it very easy so you don't have to worry about somebody else taking that name now can you you know have one name and have matching names elsewhere absolutely there's tons of streamers that do it and when you get when and if you get big enough you get to the point where you get verified you can at that point request to have your namesake for example for your channel you can request or petition the platform to to give it to you you can basically acquire it in other means um depending on how you want to do it so just for example two guys one gamepad we are two guys one gamepad everywhere except twitter um when i was setting up all the accounts twitter was the last one to go i i have a hard time using twitter um but anyway so i you can find two guys one gamepad on tiktok on instagram on facebook on youtube on threads it's all at two guys one gamepad on twitter it's two gamepad because somebody else has two guys one gamepad and we are in the petitioning stage of going to twitter slash x and basically saying look we are who we are this is proof we would like our handle the other handle is not even active they've been inactive for a year or i guess two years three years at this point um so we are we are petitioning for that same with our email though um like if you need an email two guys one gamepad you could it's two guys one gamepad podcast at gmail or contact at two guys one gamepad.com same with like my my live stream cybermerk sig at gmail.com these are things you need to take into consideration upon setting up your channel and upon building your brand because it's very crucial in the long game while it may not seem important or crucial up front it is very much so in the long-term aspect which is where we should be looking um at all times because what's important right now is not going to be important in the future so but uh, with social media you do need to once you have your name you do need to work on using social media and for some of us especially the older generation it's a little bit harder uh, because we did not grow up with social media as the primary source of communications how most of us didn't even have cell phones we barely had dsl internet so it's it's a fine line where you will see the younger generation will definitely have an easier time of posting every day if not multiple times a day and be like hey i'm going live hey look what i just did hey this is a moment hey this is uh something that happened in the stream let's talk let's network like it's statistically it's just how it is um they grew up with it they had technology from birth they had the internet from birth they had all this stuff since day one whereas the older generation did not uh, we watched it all of it evolve 
but using social media, you need to be posting. And here's kind of the opinionated version, uh, because depending on who you ask, you will hear you should be posting five times a day on every platform. You should be posting 10 times a day. Here's the fact of the matter. Post as much as you can, no more than, I would say no more than like once an hour. Uh, you need to kind of hone in on your, your community active time. So best way to kind of do this is post sporadically through the day and, you know, post at 6 a.m., post at 7 a.m., post at 11 noon, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 post throughout the day for a few months. And basically you are looking to see what time of the day you get the most interaction, um, whether it's not weather, most interaction such as views. Um, and then on top of that, if you're getting likes, shares, favorited, and uh, reposts, those all come to come into a factor that will help you. Typically, you can find it within like 30 days, but 60, 90 days is kind of the rule of thumb just because it gives you a good perspective to look at or not perspective. Sorry, it gives you a good analytical aspect to look at where you can see, oh, my hot moments for my type of content is, you know, nine o'clock in the morning. It is 1 p.m. in the afternoon. It is maybe it's 11 p.m. at night. It's whenever your community is the most active to interact, which makes it easier to be found. Uh, then you want to start working on networking. And this is very crucial. And this is kind of like, this is probably my, the biggest thing for me, and like a term as like, what I need to work on is my Achilles heel is networking. Because again, I didn't grow up with social media. I didn't have this. Facebook came around um, high school time. So to kind of put it into perspective, I am older than Google. Sad to say. Um, but networking is one of those, like I can network in person a lot better than I can on social media, which is weird. But you do need to find other streamers. You do need to find um, even brands you want to potentially work with down the line. You need to follow people and you need constantly or consistently like I would say at least on a weekly basis, once or twice a week, reach out to somebody and just be like, Hey, what's going on type thing. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm up to. What I'm doing right now is anybody who is a streamer. Um, if their content is something that aligns with what I would watch, what I would play, I follow them and then I will reach out to them. Or if they follow me first, I will follow back to a degree and I will you know, strike up a conversation or they will strike up a conversation. And I will be honest, this is kind of like the weird part because you will be able to network with no issues at times, but then other times you get what I would say is like false leads where you, where you get people chiming like, Hey man, how's your stream going? Or Hey girl, whatever. Hey, how's your stream going? I see you're a streamer too. I play, da, 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 da. I play XYZ. You do too. What's your schedule? And they, they lure you into this false sense of, oh, hey, they're actually networking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go check out the stream. They're going to check out my stream. But in reality, what's happening is they're working the system to either sell you graphics, which most of the time the graphic designers don't wait. They will just be like, hey, I see you're in the streaming. Let me tell you. And they give you their list of pricing or what they can do for you, uh, which cool but there's a time and place for it and jumping forward a little bit never on your stream by the way never during live don't do business live um but there's a time and place for it and you will get a bunch of them you get just shit tons uh, last week alone i had probably like 20 21 different graphic designers follow me on specifically twitter and I called it a false lead because it would be something as like, Hey, how's it going? Oh yeah. You play video games. La -dee -da -dee -da. Normal conversation piece. And then they'd be like, well, I looked at your channel and I think I can improve your graphics. Okay. No, thank you. Like I have my channel set up. So something to consider and just like be aware of it. There's always going to be someone trying to sell you something and they early on in your, streaming journey 
they're freaking everywhere they really are uh, so but you do need network you need to find other streamers talk with them maybe even play video games with them join their community watch their live streams um, kind of a caveat to that is do not get into the habit or or even suggest play around with whatever the special verbiage that I'm trying to look for that I can't find um, don't become part of the issue of falling for the follow for follow sub for sub trend that's still somehow going around and basically if you need more information than what those those six words mean follow for follow sub for sub is basically hey i followed you you need to come follow me or hey if i follow you on twitch will you follow me on twitch the problem with this and we've covered this numerous times so i won't beat the dead horse too much the problem with this tactic is just because somebody followed you and you follow in the back are you really going to watch their content are you really going to take time out of your day and peruse their channel on a somewhat regular basis even if it's like once a month are you going to contribute actively to their analytics otherwise no don't do it like it does not work out it hurts you more than anything because your numbers get inflated and you look like you have fourteen thousand followers but realistically you have probably a hundred honest ones who are actively watching or checking your channel out throughout your journey and then your numbers get skewed because you're you know you're one percent only one percent of your 1400 are actually watching you or fourteen thousand like that looks terrible and then when you're going live and everything or you're posting on social media and you're like hey yeah look i have fourteen thousand followers cool people come in because like wow he's doing or he or she's doing really well i'm gonna go check out the stream i want to see how he how they got there and then you go check the stream out you're like what the fuck man you only have like two viewers and realistically one of them at least one viewer inside of a streamer's live stream is going to be themselves watching on that platform uh, if you're a multi-streamer like me i can't watch myself on four different platforms uh, so i do pick one and you should you should pick one platform to watch yourself on so you can hear the audio and you can test out the quality and see if everything's working properly more on that in a second though uh, but don't don't fall into that sub for sub follow follow is the same thing it just depends on our platform youtube uses sub for sub because it's free follow for follow is free on kick facebook and twitch um, it just inflates numbers but makes you look quite bad in a analytical side of the house because again people are seeing that you have 14 20 30 000, but only one percent is actually tuning in and watching you like that's not good numbers um it's i mean it's something to kind of think about if you want to do it that's fine but understand the negative side effects that come with it part of social media is more than just like facebook or twitter or tiktok or instagram or youtube there's more to it you also have non-traditional i guess would be the best way to put it. media platforms like discord discord is huge and i say non-traditional because when you think of social media you typically won't think discord but discord can be a well of a well of just amazingness networking possibilities there because you can you can create your own community you can create your own discord server you can join others you can find others as well like it's really nice to be a part of because it also gives a different perspective on social media where you could like for example you could create your own discord server and you could invite all your viewers to join your discord server and as they do, you can play games together. You can keep them updated. They can interact. They can talk amongst themselves. Also letting them know, network within your own server. And you can do that in other servers as well. So it's something to kind of consider. Uh, not everybody needs to have a Discord server. And there are times and places for them. I can tell you firsthand, I have had three different Discord servers. Um, and was, I guess technically one under three different names. Um, I shut that down last year because one of the the side effects or one of the potentials of having a discord server is to have it go full toxic full just like nuclear and to kind of give you a glimpse into what happened on my half is i had a discord server and 
I had it for probably five. Oh no, I've had it since I like, started. So ten plus years at this point, ten years. And I had it where anybody, everybody was welcome. Um, as long as you were eighteen or older, anybody was welcome, and you can come in, you can play, you could uh, self promo, you could talk, you do whatever you want. Basically, it was wild west at times. And then I brought, uh, or then I made friends via streaming, and I brought them in as mods and admins, and they helped run it as well as like uh, build upon their own servers. And we all had our own, and we interconnected with each other. Basically, hey, if you like mine, go check out his. If you like his, go check out hers type situation. And it was it was working really well. And then last year I had a group of people I was running with. And, you know, I I'm a graphic designer on the side. I uh, was having my discord server blow up in a in a good way where people were joining in and having fun and uh they also wanted to start their streaming journey, but they didn't know where to start. So I try to help them out as much as possible and they didn't want to pay for graphics. And I was like, well, that's cool. I'll, you know, I'll make you some basic graphics. And I would, and we had a graphic designer on hand at all times, i.e. me and one other guy. Uh, but long story short, we set up their, their YouTubes, their Twitch, their kicks, their Facebook, wherever they were streaming. We set it up, um, graphics for everything, whether logos, banners, panels, you name it, alerts emotes we were setting them up and what ended up happening is somebody that i was i would say fairly close with for several years um he just got back online and he was able to stream he was able to game and so we got him resituated we got him set back up and not even six months after that journey of his started we started having discord server uh, he he basically joined my I had him as an admin and because again I've known this guy for several years he was always watching my streams we were always talking he was a military veteran as well uh, just at the time he was a really good guy and we you know had no issues it was always just you know he could talk to me I could talk to him type thing and then last year after discord server blew up he don't know the full story honestly i can just tell you my perspective uh we had certain group of people come into our discord server and randomly i start seeing people leave my discord server and i was like well what the fuck's going on and i got an invite to his i think by accident to his new discord server and i was like well hold on what the fuck and i start seeing people flood out so I did not take the high road. I okay, well, fuck this. You're not just going to take my entire community and um, steal them. And I really like it really pissed me off royally. And that's what he did. He was sniping all my communities, telling them, oh, hey, come over here because, you know, we have factions, we have guilds, we have communities on video games like Apex and, and World of Warcraft and Destiny 2 and, um, uh, bug got in his ear basically and said well sig's unable to go live and unable to play every bloody day when they're on because they were streaming honestly they were playing games for like 12 hours a day i can't do that but long story short they twisted and turned him on me and that was you know that's fine whatever hindsight 2020 fuck it but i destroyed my discord community at that point i said well i'm done and just shut my entire discord community down my server down, meaning everybody got kicked, booted, and blocked. And um, upon finding out what little bit I could of their side was, oh, well, you know, we, we just want to play games and you're not able to be active when we're active, which bullshit, but whatever. We're not here for that. So Discord can be a blessing and a curse. So if you do set your own Discord server up, um, I highly recommend you be the only admin and then create mods. Uh, if you get to the point where you can have other admins, um, then go for it. It's, it's definitely worth it. It makes life a lot easier, but just be cautious, be wary of it. Uh, make sure you vet them and you know who they are so they don't ruin it for you. So just again, I'm learning from my mistakes and it's fine. It is what it is type situation. I'm not 
frustrated with it anymore and moved on. But something to take into consideration. Discord can be helpful. I'm part of a community right now where I can go in and I can just bullshit about the day, talk about the day. But at the same time, if I need help gaming, if I need help with my stream, if I need uh, people to hop in, I definitely could. I can self promote. So something you got to consider. But moving on, because this is getting very long, so we're going to go through the rest of this fairly quickly. So once you do have your channel and your brand and your name set up, you do need work on graphic designs and you can do this either yourself. There's tons of websites out there, especially with AI being so uh, prevalent nowadays. You can create a logo fairly easy by yourself for free, or you can go to places like Fiverr. You can contact people like myself. You can go on Twitter, Instagram. There's tons of them out there and you can find somebody to do your graphics for you. One thing I will say is make sure you get free revisions. Um, and that you own the raw copy or the vector or the SVG file of your logo. Um, that is more for the copyright side of the house and the registration, the trademark side of the house. If you blow up, you want to own the rights to your logo and you don't want to have somebody else um, in possession of the raw copy. Again, that's long term effect, but most are willing to give it to you. You may have to pay a little extra, but. Once you have your graphics, you need like for Twitch kick for Twitch and kick, you need panels, you need an about me section and do set those up. Don't don't even like Roggles pisses me off. People may not check them out too often, but when they do, you need to have like an about me, what your schedule is, um, what type of games you're into. Let your community be able to find out about you in the about me section. If you're on uh, Facebook and YouTube, you have a description, same thing post links, um, post introductions, post like what this episode's about, which is video is about, make sure you're using proper tags and hashtags. Well, I guess hashtags, don't worry about tags because even YouTube said tags don't freaking matter. Um, but you want to put as much information in there as possible so where people can look at it and see what you're about. Um, so like right now, if you were to if you're watching this or listening to this on YouTube or you go to our YouTube channel on two guys, one game pad, you'll see a brief description about like what this episode is about, but you also will see links to all of our social media links to our calendars where you can become a guest on here. You can see links to, uh, I think I said social media. Yeah. You see links to Roggle switch account to my, uh, my accounts as well. You can see, you know, the shell shock cbd promotion we have my partnership with them so you see the website and promo code you can see a lot of information in the description and that just gives it so where people can open it and click the links same with panels panels you can create hyperlinks in them so where they can click it and it takes you elsewhere and it's very useful because if you for example like me I'm partnered with Shellshock CBD, so I do make a commission off or not commission. I make a 10% kickback on all sales. So when somebody buys uh, Shellshock using my promo code or my link, I get 10% back. But you guys also get 10% off if you use my promo code. So it's helpful because that's how that's another way to get revenue in. Something to kind of consider. Uh, but you definitely should have at least an about me and a schedule in there. So. When it comes to streaming something, it's a three part journey. You have your pre-production live and post-production your pre-production. You should have some type of announcement every time a teaser, uh, whether it's like a clip from your past stream, uh, a future, uh, future perspective. Basically I'm playing Warzone. Let me toss out some teaser or some clips from Warzone themselves and introduct, uh, it could be images whatever you want to include something that's eye catching and sets you apart because if it's just words in like a tweet it it gets overlooked very quickly but if you have an image or a link or a clip it takes up a lot of real estate on somebody's uh, for you page when they're scrolling they'll see it and they'll be like oh let me look at that uh, it's also where you can test out a lot of like your your uh quality insurance, meaning like your audio, your visuals. This is where you want to have OBS or Streamlabs open and kind of go from there to see if your video looks good, if your video looks like shit, if your audio sounds good, if your audio sounds shit, uh, you need to test all this beforehand. You should do this every time, but it gets to a point where once you have everything solidified in the perfect manner or near perfect manner, it's as simple as just pressing going live. 
also part of the pre-production side of the house is doing your research, finding out what you need to use to captivate your audience, but at the same time, get a uh, visibility basically in Twitch, Cake, YouTube, Facebook, wherever. And this comes to like, if you're, if you're on YouTube and Facebook, you need to go research what hashtags you use. You want to find a hashtag. You want to find a good mix of some that have millions of views, some that have only, you know, a few thousand, a few hundred. You also need to come up with your own, um, hash, basically hashtag your channel name. Uh, and then if you're doing a series that in the game. So for example, if you go to any of my streams, you will see hashtag cybermerk sig. You also will see hashtag good morning gaming and you will see hashtag whatever the game is. So like this morning it was apex. So you'll see hashtag apex legends. And those three are always there because I stream in the morning and that's my series. If I am streaming on Thursday nights, you see hashtag cybermerk sig hashtag two guys, one gamepad game night and then hashtag Call of Duty or Warzone. But you need to have those because it's it's identification for your channel itself and it sets you apart to a degree. But at the same time, those uh, other hashtags that have you know millions, thousands, and hundreds, those help you get uh, visibility from other people outside of you yourself. Then you're going on to like the live streaming side of the house. Some things you need to take into consideration is how often do you want to stream and how long are you going to stream Monday through Friday? Are you going to stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Are you going to stream Saturday through Sunday or sorry, Sunday through Saturday? Are you going to stream four days a week, three days a week, two days a week, one day a week, seven days a week? Are you going to stream for two hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, whatever the frequency is. And you need to have that solidified. You need to have a basis. So again, for example, if you go to my channel, you see my schedule is Monday through Friday. Good morning gaming starts off at 6 a.m. Thursday night starts off at 8.30 p.m. with two guys, one game pad game night. And everybody can see those at all times about the same time. If I decide to go live right now in the middle of the day, I could. It doesn't mean I can't go live outside my schedule. Schedules just help keep you consistent and consistency is key because if you're sporadic, it makes it very hard for people to follow you because they're they're wanting to watch you and the gameplay. You are the entertainment. And they're wanting to watch you. And if you only stream, you know, three times a month randomly, yeah, you may get followers, but they're not gonna necessarily watch you because they're going, well, shit, is he live on Mondays? Nope, he was live Monday this week, but he's live Thursday the week after. He's live in the morning, now he's live at night. Like you need to have some consistency and having that visual uh, aid is is very very helpful you also need to interact when you're live so you need to have your chat pulled up at all times where you can interact with it um interact with your community interact with the viewers one thing you like if they are talking you can interact with them and you need to get to the point where you are comfortable talking even if it's just to yourself so talk about the game review the game review the issues you're having the positivity Whatever it is, you need to be able to talk when it's just you because starting off, it will be just you. You won't have anybody else piping in or coming in the chat. So you need to make it seem, give it the appearance that the production value is there and that at any time somebody can come in and they may hear you talk about, oh, well, yeah, you see season three got updated today in, in Warzone. This is what's going on. This is what I don't like. This is what I like. Yada, yada, yada. And then somebody pops in randomly and they can chime in with you. They can chat with you versus if you're just playing your game and you're silent and somebody pops in, they're going to just see you playing a video game. And they're like, well, he's not even, he's not even talking. And of course there are like moments again, Call of Duty, Fortnite, Apex, whatever firefights happen where you're in the middle of an intense situation and you can't pay attention to chat. That's fine. The moment that interaction is done, you interact with the chat. Do not ignore your chat because they do make you who you are. Like that's just fucking common decency and common sense. Um, you also need, and this also builds your community too. So if you're interacting with them, they're more likely to come back because you're keeping them entertained. They're also going, oh man, he's a good guy or he's a good, or she's a good woman, whatever it may be. They like you for who you are and what you're presenting. So they follow you. One other thing, thing you need to you definitely need to do is you need to set up boundaries and restricted keywords uh 
basically inside your chat settings for whatever platform you're on, you need restrict uh, the use of words, whether it's, you know, swear words or words you just don't like, racial words, whatever. For the most part, swear words and racial words will get auto flagged and auto deleted by the platform's bot. Um, but one thing you do need to have in will be like your address and you need to break your address down to the number, the street and the city and the state. So where people can't, if people decide to dox you and they type in your address, it won't let them post. It'll flag it and delete it. And this is just a security feature. So take some time and put your address in there. Put your first and last name in there. I have. I have my first and last name. I have my address. I have my phone number. I have my wife's name, uh, my kids' names. Like I have a lot of keywords in there that if you type them, they get deleted and they get flagged really quick. And this is just security for yourself and protection for yourself as well. All doxing is not as bad as everyone makes it out to be, it does happen and it happens quite easily. So something to take into consideration because that's privacy. You want, you need to have privacy of yourself. Boundaries, you need to set these boundaries up with your community or with your viewers. If you tell people that they can play along, they need to understand uh, the rules. They need to understand the requirements. They can't just, you know, hop in and be very toxic because when you let people join your live stream, if especially if they can they can chat like vocally chat verbally chat the real then you're running into a huge potential issue because like for example i had a stream where i was gaming with some people and uh, somebody popped into our chat and just starting just using lots of racial slurs and it it destroyed that episode because youtube twitch and facebook took it down and we were like, I had a lot of viewership. I didn't even know my episode got taken down until after it went off offline because it takes a bit. But I got flagged. So, and that can affect you because if it gets flagged enough or you get taken down enough or you violate the uh, music copyright laws, you could lose your channel and um, be banned from streaming. So something like take it serious and set up those boundaries and those rules with your community early on. Um, you can also do what's called command structure. Uh, yeah, command structure. So for example, if somebody types an exclamation point and then types out the word command, C-O-M-M-A-N-D, then it will give them a list of, of commands that they can, they can use later on. Sorry, that was my dog barking. Uh, I also have one that's called exclamation lurk l-u-r-k and this just sends out a little message letting me know that hey roggle's watching your live stream but he's he's not going to interact like chat wise this is good because it lets them participate in the community lets them be known that they're there watching you uh and you should never interact with you shouldn't call out members of your viewers who are not actively chatting so if Roggle hasn't said a damn thing all night and he's just watching, I shouldn't sit there and be like, hey, Roggle, I haven't seen you chat yet. What's going on, man? I need you to type in the chat. No, 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 don't call him out. Don't be a freaking dick. Don't do that. But that's also where the commands like exclamation lurk come into play. And this is all via a, a chat bot that you can find. There's millions of chat bots out there. You have to find one that works for you. Uh, Nightbot's a very popular one that you can set up and it interacts with your community. Um, so where you don't, that's where you don't have to, but you have that, that piece of the pie off your plate to make it easier for you to work with. If that makes sense. It doesn't sound like that makes sense, but it makes it easier for you to operate your stream and anything you can do like that helps you. I'll get more into that in a bit. Um, and then you have to worry about the razzle dazzle side of the streams, your intros and outros, whether this is a video that you, you start your stream with, like here's a montage clip of all my achievements or highlight moments of the previous streams, whether it's you doing an intro itself, you need to have something because these are, uh, things that dra uh, not drag <laughs> that draws the attention in of your viewers and allows them to say, yes, I want to pay attention to this. So like, again, for example, Monday through Friday, my stream always starts off with, um, uh, 
a short little like 15 second I didn't think it's that long I think it's eight seconds video uh, because my theme is uh, cybernetics and uh, meets hacker so cyber warfare basically and it says you know trying to connect and all that stuff but then when it gets to my stream and my video my scene where I'm actively on there I always do a little quick intro of you know good morning everyone thank you for joining in I do greatly appreciate it. and then there's other stuff I explain what game we're playing I go into details about it and then after about five to ten minutes of interacting with them um, and cutting promos and all that nonsense then I get into the gameplay you also need to worry about like alerts while well, you don't have to have alerts having visual alerts helps you and it looks good on the stream in my opinion and alerts are gonna be like if somebody donates to you if somebody follows you if somebody subscribes to you uh, alert pops up on the live stream and it says you know Roggle followed and or Roggle subscribed for nine months in a row it's just that little bit of recognition that communities are built off of and a lot of people love to see because it's you know I followed you cool and if you do get somebody who follows you who who subscribes to you who donates you you best be fucking interacting with them because that is one of the biggest pet peeves of mine is I will be watching somebody and I will follow them and they won't have an alert set up I was like cool whatever they still get like a chat message that says Cybermerk said it followed you. If you if you can't take the time, this is mostly for small streamers, I should be honest. This is for small streamers that don't have a hundred people, thousand people chatting. Even then, it still pisses me off. If you can't be bothered to do a simple thank you or simple recognition of going, hey, thank you so much, Rago, for following me, or thank you, Rago, for taking the time out of your day to support my channel. I appreciate it. Like, Something minor like that makes such a world of difference because majority of the time, I will say, it's probably safe to say majority of the time, if somebody follows you and you don't even fucking call them out or recognize them for it, you come across like the biggest asshole because somebody goes, I'm going to follow you. Sure, it's free, but it's it's the principle of the matter because you probably also don't say anything if somebody subscribed to you, which is payment. Somebody donate basically paid five dollars to subscribe to you on Twitch or Kick um, or became a super follower. I think is what they're calling YouTube. Somebody is subscribed to you on Facebook as well, and you get paid out on that. So sure, it's you know 60, 70, 80, 90 percent of it doesn't matter. Somebody paid to subscribe to you, and you can't be bothered to say, "Hey, thanks for subscribing. I do greatly appreciate it. whatever your little freaking gratification." recognition is like you you have to recognize your community when they do something whether it's following donate or they just chat you have to have to pay attention to that otherwise you will not succeed and when you get to the point and to the level of like uh, the massive streamers like ninja and tim tatman dr disrespect they have a team they have a whole bloody team of mods and admins that run their chat and they can chat in that's a whole different beast in of itself because you have partnerships, you have sponsorships, you have people who are literally paying you to stream. So you need to do your job at that point. And you have mods and admins who can come into play and, you know, you're talking and your mods can come in and say, hey, you know, thank you so much for following Roggle. But at the same time, the least you can do, even as a big time streamer, say, hey, thank you, everybody, so much. Even if it's at the end, but, hey, thank you, everybody, so much for following me. I do greatly appreciate it. Or there's a cool feature you can do called credit rolls or rolling credits, where basically at the end of your stream, it's like credits that movie. And it says, this is who subscribed. This is who followed. These are the top chatters. This is the top donos. This is the top raiders. Or, uh, you, can, you can make it really fancy. All of this combined also makes your channel special and unique you need to have something that is um, different and that stands out from others and everyone's gonna or there's always gonna be somebody who's doing what you're doing too like just you can't be 100% um, never done before type thing that's long gone um, and imitation is a most sincere form of flattery according to well everyone so you need to up it and do something important do something special and uh, unique but you oh, you best fucking recognize your community and the people who are actively chatting and supporting you because otherwise, I'm telling you, you are the biggest piece of shit.
I mean that sincerely because it it looks so bad when you're going to somebody's community and they can't take even a second out of their time to go thank you for supporting me thank you for donating thank you like a simple thank you it I don't know, it it pisses me off and I know it, it annoys the majority of the streaming communities who will call out other toxic streamers for not interacting with their community and there are a lot of streamers who will just not interact with their chat at all and it's very apparent so you need to interact with your chat you inter interact with your community if they are not actively talking do not call them out now if they follow you absolutely say hey Roggle, thanks for following me i do greatly appreciate it and if they don't say anything else you that's it just leave them alone but that's also where the alert command comes up exclamation point lurk or whatever you want to call it um, i saw somebody call it uh, stock exclamation stock like stalker and it's it'll say like roggle twitch user roggle is stalking your channel from afar and just kind of let you know okay somebody's here i don't need to call them out they're they're fine you can say hey okay thanks for letting me know R recognize them anyways moving on um you do need to have a point where you do have a sign on live and sign off so basically basically your sign on would be either a video or you doing a quick little introduction your live would be you playing video games or whatever your content is and then your sign off is recapping what the live was recapping what you did recapping all the followers and subscribers just a full-on bloody recap it's very simple to understand guys a recap and then uh, if you know what you're doing the next day if you know what you're playing then you know promote that as well be like well make sure you tune back in tomorrow xyz time as we are playing this game and it just makes it a lot easier for you to uh stay connected and look like you actually give a damn and you should give a damn about your people and then after that you have post-production and moment making and post-production which is basically that that outro as it's called but made on a text format so you're going to go back on social media and you're going to say um, you know, we just get, just wrapped up the stream. Thank you so much for following. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe to you. Shout like you need. That's just another level that's going to make your your brand stand out as well. Because and I do it too, where I will post a daily recap of you know this is what happened. This is the game we played. Thank you so much. This is what was recommended. I talk about the next day's game, and you can do this either all in like a long ass thread text you can go to uh, a program called Canva. I will, again, this will come later in this discussion, which we should be wrapping up soon. Um, but you're creating content to post out there to recap what happened. So every time um, around like 10 o'clock at night, my time, I get on social media, I post an image. The image has like a, basically a recap. So where I can post on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and Facebooking the image grabs. And since you're limited to characters on Twitter, um, the image speaks higher volumes and says everything I needed to say. But it'll always be like, thank you so much for watching. I do greatly appreciate, which I do. I do greatly appreciate it. Tomorrow's game is Kingdom Hearts 3 as requested by a YouTube follower or a Twitch, whatever, whoever I was platform plus follower. Um, I typically will not name them directly. And this is because I've had too many people in the past get pissed off um, or they don't necessarily have that handle. So it's just like safe. You could say Twitch follower and then in parentheses um, and give them credit for it. And then, you know, we're playing this. So tune in tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for another episode of Good Morning Gaming. Thank you so much for the support of the channel. I will see you tomorrow. And then I can insert whatever chat uh, text I want in the actual thread of that message. Uh, so it's very like, it's very important to do the recap. So where you're recognized. So basically you're basically making a sandwich. You have your going live announcement. You have your actual live and then you have your recap of the live, this sandwich method as somebody told me once. Uh, but you also, after post-production, Part of that recap is updates. Updates can be like monthly, weekly, or uh, daily. You should have some transparency, in my opinion, 
I am fully transparent with my with my channel. And like I know a lot of people who will say, take my shell shock partnership. A lot of people will say, oh yeah, just use this promo code, you get 10%. No, no, look, I make money off of it. I'm not gonna lie. But at the same time, I will use a pro if I use a product and I can be sponsored or partner with them, that's even better. Because then I get to say, look, this shit's amazing. You need to check it out. And even better, they trust me so much that they're going to give me a discount code. Whereas like certain energy drinks will give anybody a discount code. And if you use it, cool. If you don't, cool type thing. Um, we'll get into the partnerships and sponsorships here in a second. But you need to have some transparency. This is this keeps you honest and lets everybody know as well. And it's again, very unique to you. So it's a good way to keep track of your journey where like maybe you do weekly of, hey, I'm on, if you're a Twitch, Twitch streamer, you can say, you know, this week's stream recap is I averaged 27 viewers. I had, you know, X amount of people chatting it was a lot of fun. We played these games. We had these wins and it just keeps you kind of honest. And then you can do a monthly recap as well, a weekly recap, daily recap. Uh, but keeping yourself to the point where you're not lying and you don't become um, two-faced to that degree. I like updates. I think a lot of people should do them. I get a lot of interaction on my updates where people are like, oh, hey, wow, how'd you get so many? And again, that's networking. This all intertwines with each other um, i will post on twitch or sorry twitter and i'll say this is how my day went this is how my week went as far as the stream goes and i get people who be like oh wow how'd you how'd you get that many viewers on kingdom hearts 3 or hey congratulations on gaining 20 followers on kick that's amazing small things like that it just allows you to network and uh, it keeps the community alive and positive instead of toxic trash you also need to create external content um, that should be a good reflection of your stream. Also known as clips, moments, highlights, montages, whatever you want to call them. And you can do these multiple ways. Uh, if you don't have the funds to pay for a program or pay management team, absolutely understand that. You can download a program called DaVinci and it's free and you can download your video or your VOD video on demand from Twitch, YouTube, Kick, Facebook, whatever. You can download it and make clips yourself. This is very time consuming. So just kind of be aware of that. If you're a part-time streamer, it's a lot easier because you can say, I'm going to stream Monday and Wednesday and Friday. And then Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, you have time to do this. Um, I use programs. I am all for using anything to help me um, have an easier time doing this. So I use a program called Eclipse.gg, not sponsored by any means, not with two guys, one gamepad, not with CyberMerkSig. It's not sponsored, I'm not a partner. But it's an AI program that I actually did an episode of few, several weeks ago about. And basically it takes my stream, it covers it, like it scourges through it, and it scrubs through it, there we go. And they say, oh, this is a kill, oh, this is a highlight, this is a moment, this is an interaction. Like it can take those key moments, create a, Clip ranging from 12 seconds is the shortest I've seen all the way up to 10 minutes, or you can do a montage up to like 30. And this is a great way for you to go to the eclipse.gg, go on the website, uh, create in a short format. So vertical, like TikTok videos or YouTube shorts. And you can then at that point, take the clip, convert it to a vertical format, and then post it instantly to TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. And that gives you an outreach there where people can now see your content and see if they like it. They do like it. Again, they're watching that and they're now likely to watch your stream. Now they're able, now they're likely to uh, follow and subscribe. It's a whole chain reaction. But the only way you get there is if you have that additional content. And making clips is very, very time consuming. Very fucking time consuming. I'm not even gonna lie, but like, oh, it's so easy. It becomes easier when you have programs put in place to help you. And a lot of programs do cost. There are a few one out. There are a few out there that are completely free, but they come with side effects of like having a watermark on it. So when you post that amazing kill that you got from Fortnite or that you know string of kills, you will see the watermark. And it doesn't take anything away from it. It's just kind of a nuisance because you have no say in where it goes. Some say you have to use a specific uh, hashtag. Again, find whatever. Do what you gotta do. 
at first and then you can always evolve you can always grow and where you need to post this is you know post these short contents on youtube on TikTok, on facebook um there's a program called clapper there's a bunch of them out there on threads post to twitter basically uh social media anywhere you can and um you're getting eyes on your content once you get eyes on your content then people are more likely to go check out your lives so you can also use the same clips and moments for your live announcements as well. So if you have a, a clip of you doing 10 kill streak in Call of Duty, you can use that clip on your going live. And you can tweet, hey, getting ready to go live, playing some Call of Duty. Uh, drop your link for it. Come check it out. We're going to have some fun. And um, here's a teaser for my last one. And it's a you game 10 kill streak. And lets people go, oh man, he's really good, right? Or, hey, they're really good. She's really good. And they can see that clip and they can associate with your gameplay and your channel, then they'll go check out your channel. It's all heavily, heavily intertwined with itself and should be done. Again, not everyone can, not everyone will be able to. Do what you gotta do, do what you can. Start off small and go big. And you should be posting, uh, rule of thumb is three videos a day. Um, again, if you have a lot of clips, you can post more. I, I, when I play Call of Duty, I always get like, I'm not bragging. I'm just simply saying, I know Roggle would probably get a shit ton more clips than me because he's better at Call of Duty than I am. Uh, but I get anywhere from the low end of 48 clips from Eclipse making them for me. They'll get 48. Um, the most I've gotten was one time when I was popping off on Call of Duty somehow a few weeks ago. They found over 150. So that gave me a shit ton of clips to use over the week or weeks, honestly. But let me go from three clips a day to there was a point I was posting every hour on the hour from 6 a.m. till uh, 10 p.m. And now I have a good idea of what time slot I should post the most because that's when I'm going to see interaction. Uh, so if you get to that point, it's amazing. If you make the clips yourself, be strategic about it. Um, I've been told by a few bigger streamers who have like a few hundred thousand followers that they post their stuff uh, in groups of threes three times a day. So they'll do three rounds in the morning, three rounds in the afternoon, and three rounds at night. Um, and then the people who have, you know, a hundred to a few thousand, they have the same thing, but they say, oh, I'll post a clip in the morning and the afternoon and at night. Um, and they just kind of, it works for them. But you have to figure out when posting works the best for you and you need to stick to a schedule on it. So if you have plenty of clips to be able to post 14 hours a day, amazing. That's 14 clips a day, by the way. And then do it. If you can't, if you only do three a day, do it. Uh, just find the best time and it does it does drastically matter because what time i post will not work for you all the time what time you post may not work for me and each platform has its own different time slot like for example right now as i'm making this episode instagram reels are popping off like crazy for me followed by youtube shorts and then tiktok whereas a month ago TikTok was popping off, then YouTube, and then Instagram. Consistency is key, both for your own live stream and when you're posting content, because it lets it lets you not only be consistent, but it lets you also have views come in. And when they see your content, then they're more likely to go check out your channel. When they're likely to check out the channel, they're likely to check you out when you're live. And when you're live, they're likely to interact with you, drop a follow, drop a subscribe, pay, donate, whatever it may be. So it all interacts with each other. So this is very crucial. Uh, when you're posting this content, again, you need to do your research on what hashtags you can go to, um, you can use a program. It's free RapidTags.io, and you can type in your subject. You can do AI generated hashtags. You can just go on to Google or Bing or uh, Yahoo, wherever your search engine is and type in hashtag or hashtag generator for and then whatever platform for TikTok, for Instagram, for YouTube, for, uh, Facebook and you will always find at least two three pages worth where you can plug in call of duty and it will give you the top 30 tags 
or top 10 tags or five tags, whatever the platform allows. And you need to kind of just go through and see which one works. The other way you can do is, uh, I think it's called Google Trends. Yeah, if you go to Google and type in Google Trends, you can actually type in Call of Duty and see what trends, what words, SEO a bit, you can see what words are being searched for the association with, say, Call of Duty. And then you can turn those words into hashtags by just putting the pound sign in front of it. And that's a good way to kind of get seen. And for YouTube and Facebook, that's also how you get your live scene as well. So I know that's all like a lot of information and only an hour and 15 and there's still so much more to do and I'll do a whole different episode for that. But to wrap this up, these are some features. These are some additional features that can make your entire live streaming journey very, very um, easier on you, very much easier for you to do. Uh, again, one of the big ones I, I support 100% is AI clip generators like Eclipse.gg, Powder.gg. Uh, there's a few other ones as well. I can't think of them now. Clipbot? Yeah, Clipbot I think is one of them. But basically, you can upload your video or it can pull your video from your live stream and make clips automatically for you. So what I like to do is save them or automatically post. Look into them. Most of them have a, a monthly or a annual subscription. The annual typically saves you a lot of money, but it is a good chunk of change up front. Uh, personally, again, if you go back a few episodes, I think like six, seven episodes, you will see one about uh, about this subject matter. So I cover it in detail and very in a lot of depth. And I found that what works best for me is Eclipse.gg because of the fact that I can go live and after I go live, Eclipse will pull my live stream or my video on demand technically at that point and they will scrub the whole the whole video and they will say okay let's find it and they'll find if i have a emotional reaction like if i get really hyped or if i look shocked if i you know having a bad day i'll have that anything emotional in response they will clip every kill every elimination every time you down somebody like call of duty or fortnite uh, they will clip special moments they will clip just a bunch of stuff and it's AI. So it does, it will grow and get better as you tinker with it. And you mess with it. If you're not using certain content regularly, like for me, it was at first post uh, giving me a lot of clips where I would just down people. I, w I wasn't using that. So after like three, four days, I stopped getting clips altogether. I said, Hey, you down this person. I don't see this anymore. Uh, outside of that, some things you could consider, is stream stream management or strategic stream support these are going to be people who basically hold your hand and they cost a lot of money i'm going to be honest with you i have not done either one of these two because i can't justify the means yet i'm not making money off streaming uh, once i do we'll reconsider them at that point but basically they tell you you know these are hashtags you use this is when you should go live this is the content you should try to produce this is the things you should talk about during your content production this is the type of clips this is when you should post your like your your clips on social media what social media you use when to post those like it's they full on they just kind of take over and you're just they're going yes sir yes sir yes sir and you do what they say and you have success hopefully um, th I've tried stream management one time several years ago, um, and they're the ones that that were pushing really heavy, like you gotta do one game at a time because that was a big deal back then. And while I had success, I was a Destiny Two streamer, like hardcore Destiny Two streamer. I got burnt out on that game so quick that I ruined it. Or I took a break for probably about a year or two from Destiny Two because I I was so burnt out. I was going. Uh, six seven plus hours a day five five six days a week i was streaming it i was playing with other people like it just it got so out of hand and so quickly that by the end of it i was i think it was like six months i got burnt out i was like i'm done fuck this that's actually when i stepped away from full-time streaming because i was so burnt out on streaming so burnt out on uh, playing destiny 2 that i just took a step back so i'm gonna just play what i want and i'll stream sporadically I uh, also had a kid around that time too, or my wife had our kid around that time. Uh, something you do need to consider is moderators. Again, like I talked about with Discord, you you can have moderators for your stream. They're not as intense as Discord can be. Uh, they're kind of just there to watch your chat, watch you catch 
and flag anything that's inappropriate, but also uh, for like Twitch and YouTube and Kick, they have a clip maker feature where if you're watching a live stream, they have a little button that says make it a clip or make a clip or clip it. And they can just push that button and clip something for you, which is very cool. Uh, speaking of like the AI generator, like Eclipse, uh, they have a voice command. So if I say clip it or make a clip, Eclipse will use that voice recognition software and go, okay, cool. He wants this moment as a clip. Uh, that's kind of what a mod does as well. You can say, hey, Roggle, clip that moment for me or clip it. And Roggle has done it even when we've live streamed together. Um, so kudos to him. It, yeah, you, you should have moderators, but they're not needed uh, when you first start out. You typically need them when you have a lot of chatter going on in your chat box. Then you need to worry about like programs to help you do all this stuff. Uh, Canva is a program that we use not only for two guys on gamepad, but we also use for our live streams ourselves. This is going to be where you can make thumbnails, where you can make uh, uh, overlays, logos, panels. You can also, excuse me, you can also do um, little Instagram posts. So like I have one. Again, if you're watching this on the video edition, you'll see it to the uh, left of me or right of me, wherever this direction is. Um, I have a a square post that is my recap or my end of the day. Uh, so like I posted last night around 11 o'clock, just saying thank you all for an amazing first uh, first week. Monday morning, we're back with Good Morning Gaming as we drop back into Apex Legend, highly requested by viewers. See you all at 6 a.m. Central Time. See. I can make a bunch of art and designs there that I can then use as posts. And it does drastically help. I get a lot of interaction with it and I can post that everywhere I want. Um, another program, if you are making clips yourself or you're doing a podcast like us, or you want to upload videos, you can download a program called DaVinci Resolve. It's completely free and it's a, a video editor so you can do production on it. You can also download like Adobe, but Adobe is costly. DaVinci is free. Does the exact same thing. In my opinion, I love DaVinci more than I do Adobe. I've had both. And then lastly, and probably the most important part is the financial side of the house, the money that a lot of people are like, I'm streaming to get big. Cool. Awesome. You should. Money will come when money comes. One thing a lot of people do is they instantly go out and they partner up with like G Fuel or they partner up with Rogue Energy or they partner up with some... I'm not saying those two are no names, but other companies that are very small or even massive, uh, like G Fuel is massive. So you having a G Fuel code doesn't do anything for you unless you are very well established. Looking for sponsorships, partner programs, or affiliate programs uh, should be on your forefront. And honestly, I would recommend going for like a small company. Like when I partnered up with Shellshock, they literally just launched like Technically, I was with Shellshock before they had production out um, and start off with a very small company that you can grow with as well, whether you get free stuff or not. Like I get a discount code that I can use to purchase my own stuff and, you know, try the product sponsor and promote stuff that is useful to yourself and that you actually use. So like there was a time when I was partnered with, um, well, shit, even Roggle. Roggle was partnered with Rogue Energy Drinks, and he doesn't drink them. I don't drink them. Oh, it was Sneak. That's who it was. I was partnered with Sneak Energy Drinks, which was the powder. I, I, I drink energy drinks, and I liked their product, but I couldn't justify buying a tub versus, well, I am only having an energy drink maybe once or twice a week at the time. And I, I like... It wasn't something I was head over heels for. It wasn't something I was like, oh my God, it's the best shit ever. Like Shell Shock CBD, I'm telling you, I fucking swear by this company. I love this company. It helps with like my anxiety, my stress, depression at times. It helps with uh, mental fog, mental clarity, aches and pains, my ADHD. It helps with a lot of stuff. They have health supplements like elderberry and vitamin C gummies, apple cider vinegar gummies, ashwagandha gummies nootropics or zoo yeah nootropics mushrooms like they they have gummies they have candies they have oil so they have snacks they have stuff for your dogs and cats they have beard oil beard balm uh, they just they have bath bomb or bath salts they just have a bunch of stuff that helps you live a better life 
and scientifically proven to since it is all natural to help you and does a lot more for me than like an ibuprofen or an excedrin or a Tylenol or whatever i can take cbd oil and be fine i use this product and i feel like it's worth every penny and i swear by it because again i have success with it myself so i part uh, when they gave me the opportunity to partner up with him i said fuck yeah we're gonna partner up with him and we're gonna do this shit right and and i'm going to have all their product around i, I do i still have all their product around i actively purchase their stuff on a monthly basis and i love all of it so when you're looking at affiliate programs and sponsorships and partner programs you need to you need to think about the logistical side of the house of does this actually benefit you is this a product you yourself can use on a daily or uh, regular basis to a degree if not don't be a false false profit i guess would be the only way i can think of because at that point you're saying i want the money so I'm going to sell these guys shit. It's like the fitness and health industry right now where every fitness uh, influencer is like, go buy this stuff. Stop eating this because of X, Y, Z. This has, you know, glucose, whatever. Bro, it's sugar. If you can't pronounce it, you shouldn't eat it. No, it's it's breaking down the name. Like, side note, rabbit hole. Saw somebody say you shouldn't eat I uh, sodium... Uh, iodine sodium basically you shouldn't you shouldn't use table salt uh, but they broke down the chemical name and I can't think of the chemical name at all now anyways you know, they're, they're spouting nonsense and fear mongering and it's not good we'll do a whole fucking episode about that it's not good so you using a product and saying this is the best product ever because it's natural Okay, but do you actually use it? Do you have proof? Do you have the research? Do you have the evidence? That's what I love about Shellshock CBD is the fact that you can go on their website and they have all the science out there. They have all the proof. They have all the uh, the information you could ever need is right there, so where you can see it. I personally use it. I love it. So I will. Uh, I want to partner with them. So and I did, and these are crucial things, and hopefully. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you guys understand. And hopefully this helps you in your journey to becoming a streamer. Whether you're just starting out, you're getting ready, or you've been at it for a while and you're struggling. These are things to kind of consider when becoming a streamer or as a streamer. So I do hope you enjoyed today's episode. Till next time, everyone. Don't forget to check out Thursday nights at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Roggle and I play Call of Duty over on our respective uh, channels again he's on twitch i'm on youtube facebook kick and twitch uh at cybermark city he's at roggle uh, check us out other than that i stream monday through friday first thing in the morning at 6 a.m central time um, we should have new episodes uh, again tuesdays and thursdays rolling out as well go check out shell shock of course um, and we did just release um, a new podcast extension of us called ring rage report which is roggle myself and then lane who's been a special guest on many wrestling episodes ring rage report is all about professional wrestling world whether wwe AEW, impact or sorry tna it's not impact anymore uh, new japan it's all about professional wrestling probably heavily more heavy on the wwe side of the house uh since that's what roggle watches mainly uh lane i think dabbles don't quote me on it lane if i'm wrong i'm sorry uh, watches mainly WWE and some AEW, maybe some Impact. Uh, I watch a slew of professional wrestling, so yeah. Uh, but we just released an episode last Friday about WrestleMania 40 prediction, and then we're going to release an episode this later this week about the fallout on Monday Night Raw and WrestleMania. Uh, because Cody Rhodes finished his story, Taker came back for a moment, John Cena came back for a moment. It was a fucking amazing wrestlemania 40 and it's the start of a new era over there and we're going to cover it all in ring rage report but other than that make sure you follow us on social media at two guys one game pad i hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you did make sure you follow us along leave a comment or a review of this episode or any and i will see you on the next one until then everyone take care and thank you for tuning in two guys one game pad